Hey everybody, welcome to Ocean Deep Fishing. I'm your host Ed Frolish and today we have a little bit of uh, tips for you. If you guys like going scalloping, I'm going to give you some heads up on the scallop season that's coming up and uh, just show you a little bit of gear that you need in order to do the scalloping. So first of all, you know I live close over to Crystal River and actually Crystal River, between Crystal River and Homosassa, probably the best scalloping you're going to find in the whole state of Florida, in my opinion. I know they have some up in Steenahatchee and they have a couple others around around the state, but um, to me, Homosassa, Crystal River area seems to be the best. So today I wanted to go over a little bit about the um, season, uh, what you can keep as far as uh, on the boat per person, and what you need in order to go scalloping. So let's start off with the season. It's coming up in July. July 1st is opening season um, for that weekend, and it runs through September 24th. The regulations this year, I'm not sure if they've changed from last year, but I'm gonna tell you what they are this year. So let's take it by per person. So per person scalloping, you're allowed two gallons per person, but depending on how many people on your boat, you can't have more than 10 gallons per boat. So if you got a lot of people over there, just keep in mind, it's two gallons per person or 10 per boat, no matter how many people you have on the boat. So keep that in mind. Um, the other question is, do you need a, a license in order to scallop? Yes. Yes, if you're gonna take scallops from the water, you need a salt water fishing license. Just your regular fishing license, year, uh, you can get it. If you're just going out for scalloping and you don't really fish the rest of the year, you could get a three day uh, fishing license. But I mean, for a resident, Florida resident, you're only gonna pay $17.50, which is just about the same amount for a three day license. So you might as well just get the whole year. Uh, and as far as licensing, that's all you need. Now, if you're going to charter a boat and a captain to take you out scalloping, you don't need a saltwater license. The captain's license will cover up to 10 people on his boat uh, to go scalloping. So that was the only way that you don't need a saltwater license in order to scallop, is if you go out with a licensed captain. He has a um, kind of an umbrella license that covers that, so you wouldn't need one then. But if you're going out on your own or with a friend's boat, each person needs to have a saltwater license. Okay, and then uh, the other regulations, is if you want to sit out there and shuck them before you come in, you're allowed one pint per person, a half a gallon per boat. So it's the same thing. Just make sure, depending on how many people you have on the boat, it's one pint per person or a half a gallon per boat, uh, and that's per day. So uh, that's pretty much about the regulations. Now, um, where, do, where do you go fish at? or a hunt for these things. Well, um, this is what you're looking for. And this is the actual, by, by my hand, you can see, that's the actual shell of a scallop. And that's what you're gonna be looking for. And they're found mostly in the in the seagrass. And that's one of the reasons why Homosassa Crystal River area is abundant with these, because we have great seagrass and we have a great um, clear water scenario. So they thrive pretty well in there. Most of the scallop grounds that you're going to find these morsels are between Homosassa and Crystal River, uh, and there's a place called the Bird Rack, uh, which if you're if you're a native and you've, you're around here or you've been here several times before, you know what the Bird Rack is. Uh, but it's uh, halfway between Crystal River and Homosassa as you go out and you almost meet in the middle. Oh, it's probably five miles out. They call it the Bird Rack. I haven't been out there in a few years, so I'm not even sure if it's. Um, still standing there, but it used to be the bird rack. Uh, and you have, uh, you can catch these from anywhere from, I shallow uh, snorkel as low as two and a half foot to four foot, all the way up to about 20 foot of water. But typically uh, eight to 10 foot is about the, the good depth. So it's not too deep, you can free dive. You don't, uh, with a snorkel and mass, you don't have to have tanks. If you do have tanks in that, of course, you know, it's a little bit easier. You don't have to come up and down um, as much. So it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, so if you're new to the area and this is your first time going out and you don't know where the scout grounds are, you either take Crystal River out to the Gulf and then you're going to head kind of southwest 
um, toward Tampa and out west into the Gulf. If you're coming from Homosassa, you're going to take the Homosassa River out to the Gulf and you're going to go northwest. And the grounds usually meet somewhere kind of right in the middle between Homosassa and Crystal River. Uh, opening day, you just keep going until you see a thousand boats. That's where the scallop grounds are. You can't miss it pretty much. Um, uh, and you can ask anybody uh, at the docks and stuff when you're at the marinas where you're putting your boat in. Everybody knows where they're at and they can probably give you, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, direction on how to get out there. But you can't miss it. There's a thousand boats. Opening day, you can go from, you know, probably almost touch one bow to the next bow of the boats. There's so many of them. So, all right, that's uh, regulations. So what do you need to go scalloping with once you're past the regulations? Well, um, you're going to need... You're going to need some sort of a net. Now, this is a net that just holds my um, uh, fins and stuff over there, but you're going to need a net. You don't have to have a net, but it makes it easier. They have scallop nettings where they have a handle that opens up on the top, a little small net sort of like this, and then the handles close and they go together to keep them in. Uh, so a net's a good thing. It's not necessary, but it's a good thing to have. So the uh, second thing, of course, if you're not diving, if you're just going to go out there, you need a mask and snorkel. So um, this is a new one that I just bought. I haven't even tried it yet. Um, scalp season is going to be my first time trying this, but you need a good fitting mask um, that doesn't let water in. Um, this is a, um, it's got a lock valve in here on the top. So once you go under the water, the water won't fill up your uh, snorkel. So that's it. Um, optional, I know a lot of people get a little squeamish about touching stuff under the water, rocks and stuff like that. So a nice pair of diving gloves, or you can just use a fish glove. Um, you're not gonna get hurt by handling the um, scallops themselves. They, they won't bite you or hurt you. So um, you really don't need gloves unless you just feel more comfortable wearing the gloves. And then to me, the most important thing you're gonna need out there is a good set of divers fins. Um, so now these, um, these are decent, but if you have the ones that have a longer fin, uh, it's a little better because if you're fishing out there all day, you're probably going to um, come across two tide changes, an outgoing and incoming, depending on what it is when you get started and how many hours you, you're going to be out there. The current can get pretty strong, so if you're not a great swimmer or uh, you tire out easy or whatever, you're going to be doing a lot of swimming against the current. So um, if you're not a strong swimmer, the bigger the fins, the better they are to keep you as you're going over there, pushes more water. So, uh, and then to look for the scallops, like I said, they're, they're located in a grassy area. That, that's where they like to be. Uh, you will find them around an area where it's a sand spots and then grass over there. A lot of times they'll be on the edge, maybe one or two out in the sand, but typically they're going to be found in the grass. So the way I like to search for them is if your boat's stationed here and you're anchored and the current's coming away from you in toward the boat, that's the way I want to swim is into the current. Because what happens on the bottom, when the current's coming in, it's pushing the grass. The grass is going like this and the tentacles of the grass are wiggling and you're coming this way well in between the in between the grass right here is a scallop so when you're swimming this way you can look down into the grass and kind of get a, a a good view down and you can see them a lot easier okay so this is just one half of the scallop and that's typical size that you're going to be finding they're not going to be the big scallops you know like you see scallops you get um, and typically they're going to have a you know top and a bottom and then when you're looking into the water, a lot of times right here on this edge, you're gonna see like a bunch of tiny little blue eyes and they're, they're fluorescent kind of blue. And it's uh, kind of easy to uh, spot in the grass when they're down there. So that's one thing you can look for. And the other thing too is a lot of times when you reach down to get them, they actually swim. They'll, they'll take their shell and they'll go like this here and they'll kind of just move. And they go slow. It's not like they just zoom out like a shrimp darts out. You know, you just swim up and grab them in the mid-water column. So they're pretty easy to catch. Uh, nothing to it. The hardest part is just finding them. Uh, once you find them, uh, they're easy to get. Uh, so that's about it. But like I said, you, you're going to 
the current can run two to three knots out there so um you you can incur a strong current a lot of times what i do is i'll start from the boat and i go away from the boat so when i'm in the front of the boat if i get tired out or whatever the current will just kind of drift back to the boat because if you go the other way and you've been swimming for an hour or so and you're trying to make it back to the boat you're going to have to kick against the current all the way and another thing too if you guys have several people on the boat you don't know who's strong swimmers who's not I always do a float line behind the boat i'll take my anchor rope or a ski rope um, or i have a, i have a little bag that's a throw rope for emergencies that uh, rope floats and i always tie it onto the cleat on the back of the boat by the ladder and i let it go whatever it is i'll have a 50 100 foot um rope out the back just in case somebody gets tired and they can't swim against the current anymore they can grab a hold of that rope and just rest or they can pull themselves to the boat or they could put it around their waist and you could pull them to the boat if they get tired so it's really important i, I do it all the time when i'm out there um, i've had it actually have people use it several times because they did get tired so just uh just a safety caution be, be careful you don't want you don't want a fun day out on the water turn tragic most important thing you're going to need for regulations is a dive flag make sure you guys have the proper and you'd have to look that up i don't remember i think it's nine by eleven is the size I, i'm not 100 percent sure so you need to check it out but you do need a dive flag uh, whether you're diving or snorkeling in the water every boat has to have a dive flag on uh, and technically by law, if you come up amongst a boat that has a dive flag, you're supposed to stay 50 feet away from the boat that has the dive flag on. So here's another safety thing you're going to have to watch. If you have, say, six people on the boat, five are going in the water, it's best to have one person stay on the boat just to yell at these people because people get crazy out there. They don't listen to the law. They'll get right next to your boat and want to you know, uh, snorkel right next to where you are because they think that, you know, you got the hot spot. So um, it's best if you keep one person on the boat to yell at these boats, hey, to get away, stay, I got a diver. Because even with a dive flag, um, a lot of people, they just don't, they just don't care, basically. Um, they don't have no respect or ethics when it comes um, on the water. So just pay attention, be safe. You don't want to go home one with uh, one person less than you came with um and that's a uh, that's about it um so july 1st is the opening season you all have fun i hope you get out there and and uh, if you haven't tried this it's a great family thing to do um it doesn't take a lot and i believe the license is it's a 16 and up i believe um, and double check on me don't don't take my word for it but I think is if you're 16 and up you have to have a license the younger ones like four or five six if you want to have them in the water or whatever up to 16 they don't they don't have to have a license I'm pretty sure but check on it before you go out for the regulations if you have some teenagers going with you all right guys that's it um, I hope this was informative to you I hope you get out on the water and try this it's a lot of fun uh, Peggy and I are going to go out, but we um, have to work because it's 4th of July weekend. Uh, we work retail, so we have to be out there, but we're going to be going out after the 4th um, to go out and do our scalloping. So uh, hopefully in June, we're going to take the boat out, and I'm just going to kind of just uh, hit the spots and see where they're at, see if there are any areas that are heavy and mark them on my GPS. So when we do go out, I can... Go right to that spot but anyway um thank you so much leave a thumbs up if you really like this and it was informative to you hit the subscribe button on the bottom if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet we're growing pretty good i'm trying to hit a, over a thousand subscribers by the end of this year so we're uh, just we just passed 700 so with your help we can do that and if you have any comments or questions about what i've uh, talked about or if, um something else i missed on that you want to know about hey put it in the comments i'll get back with you all right until we see you out on the water tight lines everybody stay healthy god bless and we'll see you on the next one take care